and go ahead and explain a little bit about conditional probability. So last time we looked at the probability, yes? We said probability of an event is equal to the number of element in the event divided by the number of element in the sample space. So this is basically what we specified in that. Conditional probability is a probability of something uh, is to happen given that something else has already happened. Okay? For instance, when we say probability of, say, A given B, that means we are trying to study the probability of event A knowing that event B already happened, okay? So knowing that event B already happened, okay? So let's go ahead and take a scenario and make some, a little table and see if we can uh, explain that in an example, okay? Consider the following. Let's say we have some event and those events deal with courses student take versus a grade for students. Yes. And let's say uh, we're we're looking at some grades A, say B, say grade C, and let's say this is the total number of students that with those grades, okay? Let's say we're looking at courses, English. Let's say we have math. Let's say we're looking at the biology. And in this case, we have total of students that taken or the total over here for the for the grades themselves, and these are the total students taking these courses. <clears throat> yeah. Let's say in the English class we have one say let's say it's not one class, say thirty five students who are taking English at for several classes, they got eight. Okay. And uh, consider 55 have Bs, okay? And let's say we have 110 has C, okay? So the total number of students taking this class, we're not gonna consider the F, nobody got F for the Ds, let's assume the total number of students who got, who taken this class will be 35 and 55 is 90 plus 110, 200 students. Yeah? So now let's go to math. Let's say 25 students got A's in math, say maybe 65 got these, okay? And maybe uh, 120 for C, yeah. So that's a 90, that's 210 students in total, okay? Let's go to biology. Let's say we have a 45 for biology student, and let's say we have um, again, 65 with a, a grade of B, and let's say we have um, 140 with a grade of C. So the total number of students who took the biology, uh, 250. So now we have a total number of students, 2, 210, 6, 
660 students in total. And let's see how many totals got A's. Number of students who got A's are 60, 105, and B130, 185 over here. And we have one, two, 360, 370 over here. Okay. So let's say this is the uh, so let's assume let's assume we saw a person from the college, we know that person is taking math. Okay? We know that person is taking math. What's the probability that person got an A? Knowing that he's taking a math class. Knowing that he's taking a math class. Okay? Well, probability in general is the same thing. To find the probability, we need to know the number of uh, an event E, right? We know what to know what the event is, and we need to know what the sample space is. We divide those two together, and then we end up with uh, uh, what's good? Yes. So, what is the first of all? Let's figure out what is the sample space that I'm looking at in this particular problem. What is my sample space? Is my sample space the whole school? Is this my sample space particular group of that of those schools? This school? Yeah. So, what is my sample space? So my sample space would be student taking which classes? Math class, because we already know he is a math student, right? So that's my sample space. Yes? So thinking about this, in this case, uh, let's go ahead. Think about the event. The event. What is my event? Student with A, and also what? In math. Yes? So event. Students with A grade and taking math. So far, so good. Okay, how do I represent this in what we've studied? Notice last time we said when we have and, we have what? Intersection, yes? When I say event A intersection B means A and B. Remember that? Yes? And when we say A union B, we mean A or B. Yes? In this case, we have And so now we have an intersection. So this, this is an intersection between student taking A and student taking math. So this is A intersection M. Yeah? So now let's apply the probability rule. So the probability of a given mass equal the number of the 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 number of elements in the event, which is n a intersection m divided by 
and all that. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay, now let's take a look at what the answers are. How many students who are taking math got an A? How many? 25? Divided by? And how much? Two -thirds. That's how many number of students are taking math. Yes? So in general, this is a formula for conditional probability. Yeah? So how we doing that? We're taking the intersection between the two events. Yeah? And we're dividing by the second event. Okay? Any questions? Okay, let's switch this scenario around. Do you think I will get the same answer? So now we're looking for what? Probability, a student is taking what classes? Math classes, he got what? We know he got an A. Yes? So you randomly pick a student and says, what grade you got? He said, I got an A. What's the probability that student is from where? From math. Clear? All right, let's see how that change. So now, what would be the sample space for this particular scenario? Always, the sample space is a given condition. What's the given condition? He got an A, right? So the, the sample space would be those students who got A's, yes? So now we're looking at sample space students with A. How many students do I have? With A, 105. Okay? What is the event? Student with math who got an A. So the intersection between math and A. Well, the event is still the same thing as the previous one because we're talking about the same thing. So now the event, our student who are taking math and got an A. So again, this is the M intersection A. Whether we say M intersection A or A intersection M is the same thing. Yes? Okay, now, so what's the probability of that? Would be, how many number, how many students are taking math got A? 25, so that would be 25. So the probability is 25 divided by 105. And of course, if I simplify that, we get 5 over 21. Yes? Clear? So this is always the formula for the probability, conditional probability. So probability of A given B equal probability of A intersection B 
divided by probability of p. Okay. Any questions? No? All right, let's do some examples in the book. So now we have an idea uh, what the conditional probability is. Okay, let's see what it says. <coughs> Before I go into the next one, let's talk a little bit about one more. Okay, we said, let's take two sets, A, one, two, and say three, four, yeah? Let's say set B equal three, four, five, six, yeah? And we said last time, we need to figure out the number of element in set A union B. So we have the number of element in A is four, Number of element in B is also four. Now, how many elements, how many elements should the union of A and B have in this case? Let's see. First, let's figure out what A union B is. A union B are all the elements in A and all the elements in B without any repetition. Correct? So that's going to be one, two, three, four. If I look at the three, four, they're already there, so I don't have to replace them to put them again. So we have five and six. Okay? So the number of elements in A union B would be according to what I have here is six. Yeah? How do I find how do I find that number using formulas? Well, normally we said the number of the union, the number of element of the union would be whatever in set A plus at least whatever in set B, correct? So then the number of element in A union B equal number of element in A plus number of element in B. Now, in this case, it is not. Why? Because if I add, the number of element in A would be 4. The number of element in B would also be 4. And 4 plus 4 is how much? 8. That's not 6 but the number of elements in the union is six. How does that happen? What went wrong? Hmm? They repeat, yes, what happened? When I said the number of elements of A, I counted what? One, two, three, four. So I counted all these four numbers, which is good. And then when I say the number of element in B is also what? Four, I counted which ones? Three, four, five, and six. So how many times did I count the repeated number? I counted it two times. So I gave them extra uh, addition, right? Well, I need to get them back. The way to adjust this, then I'm gonna subtract the number of element in the intersection one time. Yes? I'm going to subtract. 
So here I added three, four, two element two, right? And here I added the element twice. So if I subtract one of them, that means I'm okay. Yes? And since they are common to both of these, we call them the intersection. Yeah? So now if I follow the rules, 4 plus 4 minus 2, that will give me 6. Yeah? And that also applies to probability. So the probability of A union B, the same thing as probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection. So that formula is also applied for uh, those units. Okay? Any questions? No? All right. Well, now let's take a look at one example that requires a little bit of analysis. Let me just leave those in there. It says, given event E with a probability, so probability of a certain event E equals 0 0.4. So whatever E is, whatever the event is, has a probability of 40%. Yeah. It also says probability of some event F. Of course, this is a different name. It is different than A. And therefore, it has a probability of 0 0.5. Okay. Now, and it says the probability of E union F is equal to 0 0.7, yeah? Now, notice one thing, notice one thing. Probability of E happening is 40%, right? Probability of F happening is 50%, but the sum of them is how much? 70%. So that means there is some common event between. Yes? Yeah? So if this is E, this is F, there is this part over here which is simply the difference. Yeah? Because if there was no common element or no common event between them, then the union will be the sum of the two, which is 90%. But it is not. If it's not exactly 90%, then there is some uh, common element between them. <clears throat> now, it says it says uh, find Okay, it says find uh, <clears throat> E given F we want to find probability of E given F. Okay? So how do I find E given F? Well, to find probability of E given F, we should know two things. We should know first, if you remember, we should know the intersection between E and F, yeah? CP, E intersection F. And we're gonna divide that by, it is given F, then the probability of So to find the intersection, we've got a whole lot of ways to find. We could use Venn diagram to find it. 
We could use formulas to find it, yeah? We could use anything. So let's take a look at, if I try to find it in Venn diagram, call this E, call this F, yes? We know in E we have, how much? Point four. So somewhere in here has to be point four, and then somewhere in here has to be point five. Yeah? I don't memorize any formula. But I know both of them together have to be how much? Both of them together have to be point seven. Yes? Are these point seven? No? Okay, how do I figure out? What's the difference? These are point 0.9, yeah? Okay, so point 0.7, point 0.9, take away point 0.7 is 0 0.2, yes? So that means the difference is 0 0.2. Okay. So that means the intersection is at least what? It's 0 0.2, correct? Let's, let's adjust this. So 0 0.2 here. If I put 0 0.2 here, what do I put here? I need a total of how much? 0 0.4? Yes? So what do I need to put here? Over here, I need a total of 0 0.5. We already got 0 0.2 over here. What's left? Yeah? So far, so good? Okay, now, if I add them together, do I get 0 0.7? That's perfect. So now I can say the intersection over F is, that's the intersection, yeah? Which is 0 0.2 divided by F is 0 0.5, which is, What? Two over five. This is one way of doing it. Another way is, we already know from the formula I just wrote previously, probability of the union, probability of E, probability of F, minus probability of E intersection F, yeah? And we already, we know what this is, we know what this is, we know what this is, I can figure out what this is. Yeah? So we know that is 0 0.7 equal, E is 0 0.4, 0 0.5 minus E intersection F. So to solve for this, I'm going to bring this to this side. I'm going to take this to the other side. P, E intersection F equal, those two give me 0 0.9, 0 0.7 equals 0 point. Yes? So that will solve this particular Scenario. Of course, now we know the intersection is 0 0.2. We can just divide it by, we can use the formula, divide it by 0.5, and we should get up with 2 over 5. Okay? Any questions? Let's continue. Then. This one requires a little bit of more work. Let's go ahead and do that. It says two fair coins were tossed. And it is known that at least one was ahead. So we already know one of the results. And one of the results is ahead. Yes? So we had two coins. We threw them on the floor. One of the results is ahead. And therefore, 
uh, we know one of them is ahead. Yes? Okay, it says, find the probability that both will hit. Yeah? So let's take a look at scenario. So we have a scenario. We have two coins thrown on the floor. We know one of them happened to be had. What's the probability both of them are? Yeah? Let's make scenarios. Let's make uh, some uh, events and see what we're looking for. Okay. Let us, or well, let's start with what happened when we throw two coins on the floor? what kind of outcomes would I get? Yeah? So one of the outcomes would be both of them are heads. Yes? So, add head. That's one of the outcomes. Yes? What other outcomes we could have? Head and tail, right? So the first coin is the head. The second coin is the tail. Yeah? What other outcome could I have? We could also have tail tail, right? Any other outcome? How about the first tail, the second is head? Yes? And we nobody says the two coins are the same. You could have a diamond and nickel. Yeah? So one time the diamond is head and the nickel is tail, the second time is the nickel is head and the diamond is tail. So we could have tail and head. So that's all possible outcomes that we could have. Remember, we have two. From each count, we have two possibilities. And therefore, two times two is four. That's the total number of possibilities we have. OK? So that's the sample space. They said something about at least one is head, right? Let's take a look at that event. With that event, let's call it, say, event one. At least one is head. Just want to describe what they are. So what is event one consist of? What are the possible outcomes for event one from the sample space. So when we say at least head, which one of those outcomes fit for this particular event? We say head, head, both of them to be heads, right? Because we're saying at least one, if both of them that fits uh, satisfy the condition, right? Also, head tail satisfies the condition, correct? And tail head satisfies the condition. So far, so good? Okay, now, the second event they're talking about is two heads, right? This is the event we're looking for. So event two, I say both are heads. So what does event two consist of? One element, head, head. Yes? So now, what are we looking for? The probability that both of them are heads, yes, isn't that what it says? Both of them are heads, given, what is the given condition? At least one is. Does that make sense? So what does that equal to? Equal probability of E 
intersection F, uh, E1 and E2 divided by Yeah. So let's find each probability. So what's the probability of say E1 first? Let's be N E1 divided by N of the sample space, correct? How many elements in E1? Three. How many elements in the sample space? Four. That's equal to 0 0.75. Okay. Now we need to figure out the probability of the intersection. Okay, now if I take a look at both of these events, yeah, what do they have in common? How many elements do they have in common? Is it two or one? One. Remember, both of these are one outcome, yes? So therefore, it's one. So it's equal to one over the sample space, which is four. Let me write the formula down first. I'll write the number. So it'll be N of E2 intersection E1 divided by N of the sample, 1 over 4, which is 0 0.25. Yeah? Okay, now, let's follow what the formula says. Probability of E given, E1, uh, E2 given E1 is the probability of the intersection, which is 0 0.25, divided by the probability of, of E1, which is 0 0.75, which is 25 over 75, one third. Yeah? Okay. So that's one way of doing it. The other way we could use logic, the same thing we just did at the beginning, right? So let's see what's going on with logic, yeah? Probability of remember when we said a probability of a student have an A given that he's a math student, yes? And then we said the sample space, our sample space would be all the students who are taking math. Yeah? Okay now when I say probability of E two given E1, what is my sample space? What do I know? We know at least one of the coin is what? Is a head, yes? So my sample space would be your second number, E1, yeah? <coughs> Correct? And then we said E2, both of them what? Are heads. Huh? We need to look for E2 and E1 to see how many intersections between them they have. And how many between E2 and E1 do have intersection? One of them, right? Okay, so we could have done it this way too by just thinking about logically without using the formulas and going every step. A lot of times you're really using the formula maybe, okay, 
Okay? But sometimes, logically, you get into uh, the answer quicker than what you would do when you're doing it uh, using the form. Because using the form, you have to go into the steps to get the information. In this case, you already know the information. You just put it down there and then get it. Any questions? Okay, so now we need to look at one more. Product rules. We said probability of A given B equal the probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B, yeah? We also said probability of B given A equal probability of A intersection B divided by probability of A. So those two are my probability. Conditional probability we just looked at, yes? Okay, now, notice from the top one, we can say probability of A intersection B equal cross multiply probability of B times probability of A given B. Or, from the second one, we could say, or is equal to probability of A, probability of B, given A. Yeah? Now, remember, it's one way to remember it is, notice what, do I, what the sequence is going. B, A, B. Yeah? A, B, A. So the different letter is always in the middle. Okay? Clear? All right, let's go ahead and do one example quickly and get it over with today. It says, according to data from United States Census Bureau, we can estimate the probability that a business is female-owned as 0.3595. So let's say uh, E or F business owned by a female, and then we given probability of F equals zero point three three five nine five. Okay, and it says the probability that the business has one to four employees, given that is a female owned, is 0.5709. So let's go ahead and talk about E is the event business has one to four employees. Okay? E is the event that the business has simply one to four employees. Yeah? So what is given? It says the probability of E given F. So they're giving me the probability of business has one to four employees being or given that the business is owned by a woman, yes? That is, is 0.5709. It says, what is the probability that business is a female owned? So we're looking for female owned, 
and and has one to four employees. Well, I don't know if you remember last time we talked about the word and, yes? That the word and means intersection, yes? Okay, so now we're looking at a female-owned business. We called it F, yeah? And a business that contained one to four employees, we called it E. So we're looking at probability of F intersection. Yeah? In this particular problem, is the more complication is the wording, <laughs> then the solution. Why? Because the wording is too much, so we put down the wording. As soon as you put down the wording, the solution comes in easy. Now, for this one, we can use equation A, or did I erase them? I think I erased them. Yes? So what formula do I want to use? So this is equal to. Now, let's see. What am I given? Well, I'm given E given F, right? So with that, I need F. Do I have F? Yes. That's it. Correct? So that is equal to the probability of E, or I'm sorry, F, times probability of E given F, and that is 0 0.3595. Times 0 0.5709, and I believe the answer is 0 0.2 uh, something. Let's see, 2052, and that will be the probability a business is owned by a million and also has one to four employees. All right, so I think that's where I'm going to stop today. Next time we meet, we go back a little bit, and then we continue forward. Uh, Friday, uh, don't show up, this Friday, okay? So I'll see you back here on Monday. So that will give you a nice weekend. Hopefully some of you will go back and study some of the information that you saw, you've learned, okay? All right.